The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Sporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining me and please don't forget to drop a like on this stream, comment on it and don't forget to share it to your social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. All of these things are free to do, take seconds and they will help the channel out tremendously in terms of its growth. We thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. We're here to discuss the Betway Cup, which finished West Ham United 2 Celta Vigo 2 and West Ham prevailing 6-5 on a penalty shootout at the London Stadium. The final of the Betway Cup, a tournament that we have absolutely dominated since its inception. So, let's have a little look at the teams that was put out by Julien Lopetegui in his first game at the London Stadium. Sadly for him, it was played in front of a, of a stadium that was quite sparsely populated from the visuals that I've seen. The upper part of the stadium had nobody in it. I'm led to believe the, the, the attendance was approximately 15,000. I don't know if that's actually been confirmed or not, but that's what I was led to believe. Anyway, the, the starting lineup was as follows. So we had Ariola in goal. We had a back four of Kufel, Mavropanos, Kilman and Emerson from right to left. We then had a midfield trio of Rodriguez as a defensive midfielder. Suchek and Pakatar just playing a little bit ahead of him. We then had Kudus, Bowen and Antonio just playing as a sort of like as a striker three, a sort of an, an offensive three, um, just sort of like ahead of the midfield. Celta Vigo, I'm not really going to go into too much because to be honest with you, most of the names don't mean an awful lot to me. I'm guessing most of the names don't mean an awful lot to you. Possibly the one exception to that when we covered it on the preview that we did, my brother and I, was Iago Aspas, who some of you might remember from his time at Liverpool. But we started the game. We started the game brightly. I thought we were we were in possession of the ball. We had plenty of possession. We were moving the ball swiftly. We were We were confident. We were bright. We were entertaining. And we got off to a fantastic start when in six, six minutes on the match, we got a goal from Jared Bowen, who was a beautiful crafted pass through from J uh, Lucas Pakatar, who was pulling the strings all the match. He played the ball into Bowen, who took one touch to control it in the round the six yard box. Second shot past the goalkeeper, but makes it one nil and we were off and running for the remainder of the first half or the remainder of the match up until the point when Celta Vigo managed to get fashion and equaliser. We were actually playing really well. Again, I thought we were we were quick. We were um, looking to make some good moves. When we were asked questions, and, and Celta to Vigo, to be fair to them, they didn't just come to have their roll over and have their tummies tickled. Let's make that point. Um, they did keep us honest. They did make us sort of work hard from on, on occasions. But I thought that when we had the ball, we were sort of like making good attacking movements. However, that kind of came to an end, but was was sort of like halted to a point, if you will, round about the 20, 20 foot one minute mark when Mahilo got 
the equaliser. The ball was played across the penalty box. Vladimir Kufel got a sort of so-so header to the ball and the ball dropped to Mihailo and he, he buried the ball past uh, Ariola to make it 1-1. Bit disappointing. I, again, I point the finger a little bit at Kufel. I think he was he was very culpable for that goal coming about. But it is what it is. It's pre-season friendly. I'm not going to get too bent up out of shape over it. But I think it's fair to say that if he's involved in too many games going forwards, and who knows, we might have a new right back before we're too much older. But I think he needs to sharpen up. The last two games that he's played, he's he's had goals that you could point to him and say that he was culpable for them being put in the back of the net, if not totally to blame. But anyway, we carried on. We picked ourselves up. We dusted ourselves down. We carried on playing a little bit of entertaining football, bright football on the attack, which is something that we've not really seen too much of in recent times for reasons that we all know. And then around about the 34, 35 minute mark, we went to one up again. And it was scored by Lucas Pakatar, who was having a really good game. He was moving around the pitch with, you know, attacking intent. He was receiving, giving, going. He was making some really incisive passing. And he got on the end of a ball and he, he ended up making a sort of like as a lobbed sort of finish, if you will, into the back of the net past their goalkeeper, made it 2-1 with about 10 minutes to go. That was how it stayed till half time. Now, at half time, there were several changes that were made. Well, I say several, two in actual fact. Um, Lucas Fabianski came on for Al Alphonse Ariola, and James Ward-Prowse came on for Guido Rodriguez, who obviously made his, his home debut in front of a, a sparsely populated London Stadium, sadly. That's the only sad bit about it for the guys that were making their debuts and whatever, and, and the manager, their first time at London Stadium, and there's, there's not very many people there. It must have been quite disappointing for them, but the basic point about the protest, 100% agree with. So, obviously... As the second half progressed, there was a lot of substitutions that were made on both sides. It, it kind of stunted the momentum of the match, I felt. Um, 66 minutes gone, we we ended up conceding an equaliser. Now, I was obviously doing a watch-along on the channel, and it was basically it was Naya Fager that was, again, the culprit for this one. Uh, again, a player that who probably may well find themselves getting fairly limited game time in the season, might even find themselves off to pastures new before the, the transfer window closes, in point of fact. He was dilly-dallying on the ball, and I remember saying in the commentary that I did that he needed to be careful. And we, we commentators kiss of death within about five, ten seconds of those words leaving my lips. We'd conceded an equaliser, wouldn't you know it? Him just sort of like mucking around on the ball and not being quite sure whether to stick or whether to twist. He got robbed. And from the resultant play that Celta Vigo put together, they managed to put the ball in the back of the jet, the back of the net. And wouldn't you know it, the scorer of the goal, his name is Duran. What can you do? So we'd conceded the equaliser. It's 2-2 again. It's a Desmond. Now, again... The game played out. Both teams had chances, if we're being completely honest. And in actual fact, at 2-2 with the clock winding down in the 90th minute, in actual fact, Celta could have actually had the winner. But it was a smart save from Fabianski to push the ball over the bar. In the Bet Wake Up, because it's a pre-season friendly, we don't go through the rigmarole of having extra time. We just go straight to a penalty shootout. Now, we actually went... We managed to score the first penalty, which was put away by Aaron Cresswell. And then, obviously, their player full came up to take a, a penalty. I can't even remember who it was, to be honest with you. And he had the penalty saved by Lucas Fabianski. He made a, made a good save. He's obviously got a reputation as a bit of a penalty save specialist. And he obviously came up trumps there. However, when it came to further down the track, I think it was uh, we'd taken two or three penalties by this stage, and it was Nicholas Fulkrug who came up. Now Nicholas Fulkrug actually has a really good record from penalties. I think he's got around about a ninety-three percent conversion rate in his career. This obviously won't go against his copybook because obviously we're talking about competitive games. We're not talking about friendlies, but 
But wouldn't you know it, we've got the one and only German that takes a penalty like that. It's probably me being very, very unfair. I'm sure it was he, he will do better than that when there's actually something riding on it. But it was quite a disappointing, quite a tame penalty. And the goalkeeper made the save with these. This then resulted in the penalty shootout after five penalties. We were locked at four all. And now we're in a sudden death. Now, we obviously ended up going to sudden death penalty. We had um, the people that converted the penalties up to the, that point were Cresswell, Ward Prowse, Suchek and Aguirre and uh, Guillerme, if I remember correctly. The last penalty was Max Gilman that we got. So that made it 6-5. And it was Duran who actually got the equaliser to take it into penalties that had their seventh penalty. Obviously, if he scored that, then it would have been 6 all. However, he blazed the ball over the bar and it meant West Ham won the penalty shootout by a scoreline of six goals to five. Decent, decent result. You know, it's it's a pre-season friendly. It's a bit of silverware, but really and truly, I, I was being quite facetious at the beginning, saying we've made the final of the Betway Cup. Look, it's a it's a pre-season tournament. It's nice to win it. I'd prefer to win it than to lose it. That's for sure. But really and truly, the main event will begin next week. Thirty-eight match Premier League season and the opener next week at the London Stadium against Aston Villa. Hopefully, we're going to get Jean-Claire Todibo in the starting eleven for that game, I would suspect, quite likely, or maybe he'll start from the bench. I don't know. And hopefully, by the time this game comes around, we will have a new right-back in Aaron Wambisaka. So, we got we got a good result, like I say, good result, played well. few little defensive lapses, as I say, with from Kufau from Naif Aguirre. There was a, a little bit where I thought Kilman looked a little bit suspect, but I do think that probably he will benefit from having someone like Jean-Claire Todibo alongside him. And once we get Aaron Wambisaka there, that back line is looking much, much stronger. And offensively, we look absolutely just so frightening, I'm sure, for opposition defenders. You know, you've got full Krug, you've got Somerville, you've got Bowen, you've got Kudus. I thought he was he was excellent today, Bahamid Kudus. I've got to give him a shout out. Pakatar pulling the strings. That is a really, really offensive lineup. And we've got some good defences coming in as well. So this could be a good season, guys. Um, let me know what you think. You've got the comment section below. Get stuck into it. If you saw it, tell me what you thought of it. What do you think the season ahead is shaping up to look like? Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm going to disappear now. And as I always ask you guys to do, you never let me down. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your socials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. All these actions are absolutely free of charge. They don't cost you a copper coin. We won't have your bank details and it will help grow this channel. Thank you very much indeed for your support, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to disappear now. All I need to say to you now is come on, you irons, and don't forget to give your support to the Iron Supporting Food Bank's charity. See you next time. The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Massive, everywhere we go.